Okay, give us a wave, Lindsay, if you can hear us. Can you, are you with us? I'm, I'm with us. <laughs> Good. I think. Kling, you there. What's up? All right, let's get this thing going. Thanks oh, for being with us. Yes, hydrate, and let's, yeah. let's begin. Uh, because it's game day. It's game day, ladies. We're going back to another <laughs> Portland Thorns classic. Yeah, and you know, and I, think that, it, I think we should all get beer for this, don't you? Uh, let's see. So maybe a little early now. What we need to do then is yeah, get we're napped. Watching, to, we're watching instead of playing. Like, you know how hard it is to run up and down that field? Like, sometimes I feel like a beer is just the smartest thing to do. Clean. <laughs> No, I rewatched this game. You were playing nine half of the game. I know. <laughs> I was cracking up. I actually texted Allie Wagner and I was like, because uh, she was like, looks like Klingenberg is pushing for a new position. I was like, <laughs> I have been telling Mark that for years. You were this close, Kling, to that goal. God dang it. I know. This close. This close. All right. Doesn't count, does it? <laughs> no, but. At least we're paying attention. Are you are you guys officially ready to do this? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're Yeah, ready. I just wanted a 30 sorry, minute catch up first. <laughs> Good lord. Let me let me at least welcome folks into this thing, okay? Oh, okay. So we got to save our really cool comments for Yes. Later. Save oh, them. Gotcha, gotcha. Game day. We're going back to another Thorns classic and delighted to have you with us. The fans have spoken. This week's must see match. 2017 NWSL semifinals between the Thorns and Orlando Pride played in front of a packed house at Providence Park and here to break it all down. Now you guys can be living large. Lindsay Horan, Megan Klingenberg, thank you so much for being with us, ladies. Thanks Hello. for having us. Okay, so this game airs on April 18th. That is the very day the season was supposed to start for the Portland Thorns and other teams around the league. I can't imagine the feelings that you're all going through right now. We're going to get to that towards the end of the show, but I want to dive in to our classic match first. Okay. 2017. Unfinished business was the, the mantra of, of this club after that gut punch of a 2016 semifinal loss. Had to bring it home. Did we overhype it? Did the media overhype this mantra, unfinished business? Or was, was that really the chant, if you will, carrying into the playoffs. Weigh in, ladies, please. Oh, come on, Ann. The media always overhypes everything. <laughs> so, so there was no unfinished business mantra? No, no. I mean, of course there, there is. Like, we knew that we were playing amazing soccer in 2016. Yep. And we were, in my opinion, the best team in the league, uh, playing the best soccer at the end of the year. And unfortunately, just didn't get it done against, I guess it was Western New York. Western at that New time. York. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so going into 2017, I think the mindset was, okay, well, we can play pretty soccer or we can friggin' win this thing. Um, and well, you always want the two to come together, but sometimes they don't. And I think for us, it was just like, let's get this done. Uh, we don't care how it happens. We just want the trophy. Lens, was it unfinished business as far as you were concerned? Kling just killed that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I do. I do feel like it was. I think the uh, 2016 semi. It was a semi, right? Yeah. Yep. At home. I think it was just like so tough because we were at home as well, and it was such an intense game and. You know, we had the comeback and we thought, you know, it was going to go our way in the end. Um, so it kind of like, it, it felt cool that we had that chance again um, that next season in our um, our home stadium, you know, on our turf. So, yeah, I, I, I do feel like that. And um, to Kling's point, too, it was just more about, you know, that winning mentality, however possible we were going to do it. Um, so it was, it was cool. It was a cool feeling that year. So the match and the buildups coming, uh, you guys, all kinds of storylines, best defense in the league, Portland Thorns, against the highest scoring in terms of goal scoring teams in the league, Orlando. You guys are both red hot coming into this match. You guys are finally getting health, healthy with Heath back from that back injury. 
Alex Morgan, Marta, live and large. And, and help me if you remember this, a couple of days before the match, Pride uh, coach Tom Sermani was quoted as saying, the crowd at Providence Park is hostile, like a proper football environment should be. My biggest concern is that my players get protected. Of the four playoff teams, we're the least physical and play a style of soccer that should receive better protection in the modern game. The implication, of course, that refs can be intimidated by the raucous crowds in Portland. Mark Parsons, Mark Parsons blitzes out, your, your coach blitzes out a, a, a response with an emoji, I see you, Tommy boy. And then he goes on to say, let's hope the refs don't fall for that trap. Do you guys remember this at all? Heck yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. I, think, um, I don't remember that. No, this How great is that? Crazy. How great is I hear you, Tommy boy? This is, yeah, I remember all of this. This was like one of my favorite things happening before <laughs> the game. It was like the coaches were playing the game outside the game. Yes. And it was awesome. <laughs> Do, do you guys buy into? Do you guys buy into Sermani's? Did you buy into Sermani's deal that we need protection and no. the refs are intimidated? I mean, I, I all I remember about being a thorn over my four or five years, however many it is, is like how many penalty kicks we should have had and have not been called. <laughs> I was just gonna say, I feel like we're the ones that aren't protected. <laughs> For sure. Is that that's, not true? That's what Parsons was intimating as well. Okay, I, I, now Kling, I love the fact that you remember that. And, and it was a back and forth thing that was, you know, uh, coast to coast, if you will, before the match even started. It was classic. All right, so let's get to the match. You guys scored two quick goals. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the first time you've led a playoff game since the finals in 2013, when you guys weren't even with the club. You guys were always chasing in, in the playoffs in terms of falling behind early and, and, and doing some work with the equalizer and then some. Um, Kling, that first goal. Woo -woo! Yeah, baby. Okay, your, your service. Is. Come on now. Your service from distance to Amandine Henri was absolutely sublime. Well, Kling, you. Kling, walk us through that service and you guys going quickly up one nothing. how huge that was from both your points of view. But, 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 but Kling, uh, Walk us through that first goal in terms of what you were seeing to get past Marta and lay that ball in. Well, it's a good thing that I just rewatched this whole game because um, <clears throat> it was three years ago. And if you asked me about two hours ago, I would have not had an answer to this, Anne. But, uh, but I'm glad you did your homework, Clay. Same, same. Um, no, I think what was really cool about this match was kind of watching the ebb and flow of it. Okay. What? Sorry? No. Yes, go. Oh, yeah. So watching the ebb and flow of who had possession and who had kind of like the advantage going forward and having the ball and creating chances. And we really went after them in the first 15. I like we went. And so the build up on that play was actually really good soccer to watch because I think it went up the <laughs> right side, ended up coming back, came out to me. And then we got a mismatch. and. You know, I love Marta. She was at the top of her game in 2017. I remember she was having a world-class season. But she doesn't do a lot of 1v1 defending. And uh, it's a mismatch. And so, like, knowing kind of who you're against. And then I think if you watch the playback, what's really cool is Amandine, like, knows me. <laughs> and because she knows what we've been doing all year, you can see her already her wheels are turning and she's making moves before anybody else on the field is making them so the ball comes in it's in behind the defense and amandine has already started running towards the goal before any of the orlando players even recognize that they should be running backwards and uh it just shows you like how in sync we were that year and it also shows what kind of world-class player Henri is got it um, sir <laughs> I, I mean, I Henri went like on. Rocky, though. I think you'll like Rocky. Come on now. So Henri goes on to say that Kling's crosses are always perfect. She was quoted as saying that. Uh, and what, what, yeah, which I love. Uh, Kling, you, you, you kind of took up the mantle 
with with Heath being out with those with the injuries and 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 missing so many games you took up the mantle in the assist department that year to me you take great pride in making sure your services are as good as anybody's in the league walk us through that and Lindsay I'd love you to weigh in on that as well because you've been on the receiving end of some of those services yes she has so lucky the cling her ankle connection I love it uh -huh. um actually Lindsay and I had one of the biggest give and goes in the history of the this. <laughs> okay I'll let you take that one I'll let you take that one. go go Lindsay um but actually like I I think that just like I take so much pride in assist um, because I don't, I'm not getting in front of the goal like Lindsay or her uh, or Sink or Rasso or Tobin those type of players are in the six and I'm not there I'm kind of on the outside so for me having a huge impact on the game is having assists having good crosses where we get chances and I actually Mark makes a lot of like he makes fun of me a lot because he says that nobody celebrates assists as hard as I do and I think that's probably true because I'm just like so happy for my teammate that scored but I'm also so happy to like be involved in a goal <laughs> so there's like this double there's like double happiness coming out and I just I, I just take a lot of pride in that so it's really fun being able to get in the attack in that way and, and what was neat, Lindsay, is this game tightens up quickly with, with, with Orlando answering, and it's two to one at half, as you guys know. They come off the second half and probably are on the front foot. If, if we are all real honest with each other, they had some chances. Your team, your collective team defense, and we'll, we'll talk about this, but it was something else. But Lindsay Horan, your assist, I think it was the 71st or 72nd minute, was so perfect. And it was kind of a sleeping Orlando defense with that real high line and your through ball to Rasso who just <clears throat> uh, torched the defense to score and make it three, one was huge. I know goals. I know goals are, are paramount. I get it. But as Kling said, you know, assists are so critical and I know you pride yourself in that too. That was huge for you. I would imagine that ball to Rasso who converts. Yeah. Um, first, I just wanted to jump on the, the cling assist train. Sure. <laughs> um, people, you know, don't understand how much work is put into that and the things that clings, cling does in training and working on her, her crosses and me and her actually individually just doing it. And even before the game, I don't know if anyone notices, but I have to get a clean finish on one of clings crosses and it has to be a volley. And like, I, I literally don't let Kling go inside until I get that. Love so it. It kind of just, um, you know, we, we both get that confidence before the game. So it's really um, exciting to me when, when someone like Kling, who, who works her, you know what off um, and prides herself on that, it's, it's, it's really cool. So I just wanted to say that. I'm glad. Um, That's good stuff, Lindsay Horan. Now to your assist, my friend, <laughs> go baby. Same as Kling, I love giving assists. Like it makes me so happy. I almost get more excited than, than scoring. Um, but I think, like you said, they had a very high line the whole game. And I don't think we did a good enough job exposing them, just watching it back. And I think in that moment, it's like you have Rasso on, on their back line. She's going to get to literally any ball you play <laughs> over the top. And Ash was kind of um, sitting back in her box, so it was. It ended up just looking perfect. <laughs> um, Russell gets a clean finish. Somehow, always ends up on the ground. <laughs> but, That's so funny to me, Lynn, <laughs> because she always says she maintains to this day, and we can get in touch with her in Australia if we need to. But she maintains to this day that she meant to Paul. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> to this day I'm like Rasso you did not mean to fall it's a great finish but no chance you meant to end up on your butt no no but um again that was like the moment you know we took the 3-1 advantage which was huge because they were like coming at us and um we're in our half a lot and we were doing a lot of defending so getting the third goal really um helped boost our team a bit um so yeah you know, and, and then the depth takes over the last chunk of time. Your, your bench, the people that Parsons was able to bring off the bench was uh, 
fantastic. You know, Brynja's daughter comes in and is, is playing box to box. Nadia comes in and as soon as Nadia comes in, she sets up sync and that's the goal that put this thing away. Four, one, done. Okay. You guys erase that ugly taste from the 2016 semifinal uh, setback at Providence Park. I want to talk quickly about the defense. Um, again, Orlando, even, even without Camilla, who had blown her knee out, uh, Orlando playing Marta at top of her game. Morgan is playing very, very well. They're scoring goals left and right. And you collectively, not individually, but collectively play that defense that smothered them and took away opportunities. Could you guys weigh in on the importance of defense? Obviously that game and how it carried over into the championship win against Carolina the next week. Vince, you first, because I, I want to hear midfield perspective. Yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I think our back line and our keeper, um, they're absolutely incredible. I think they're always incredible. But what makes a, a good team great defensively is, is getting everyone on the same page, and that is meaning the midfielders and the forwards and, and where it starts. And I think that year – um, we, as you said, we were so collectively in tune with each other and what we were doing and helping each other out, doing the dirty work first. And I, you know, just watching it, I, I saw like Almadine making, you know, 60 yard runs back and that's not <laughs> her favorite thing to do. And, <laughs> um, and just so many players that were, were doing like the little things, the dirty work making it easier on 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 the team and it, it might have not been like the first initial pressure on the ball or or step up or or whatever it might have been the second player or the third player that won it and I thought that was that was really cool is you know it was three or four players doing something and, and the fourth player wins it and now we're we're going forward so um yeah it, it was a special year but I also like I said in, in the first place our our back line and AD were absolutely incredible that whole season and and continue to do that. Clay? Yeah, I mean, it's a credit, a big credit to AD. I, I think that she oftentimes doesn't get the attention that she deserves. And I think in recent years, more people have been talking about her, but they don't even realize that like some of the things that we do or did in 2017, <clears throat> defense was directly related to how good she was and how much we trusted her. Yeah. Um, we knew that anytime there was gonna be a ball lofted in the box that she was gonna snag it. So we weren't even worried about it. Uh, we actually wanted people to cross the ball from like really far areas because we knew AD was just gonna come out and grab it. Yeah. Um, so like a huge credit to, to AD and how amazing she was. And the other thing that I noticed during that game, which maybe I could have forgotten because this is almost three years ago is how many people got behind the ball yeah uh it's incredible there was a one there was one point in the second half where 10 people were behind the ball yeah. and mm. they were trying to break down a team of of 10 plus ad that's not going to happen you know it's 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 just incredible to see how much work people put in to get behind the ball and make it hard for orlando because we knew if we were all doing this together and we get a bunch of people back then we're in a good spot. And then there's just some incredible <clears throat> uh, individual moments as well in that game. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was one time where Menguez blocked a, a Marta uh, 1v1 yep. in the box. Kath absolutely crushed Alex Morgan with a header one time in the box. And that was a sure goal. I mean, there's a lot of times where we had players coming up big in big moments and I don't think those players necessarily get the the shout outs or the credit or the whatever but you know we do everything collectively and then when we need somebody to shine they did so obviously that win propels you into that championship match which you win uh the next weekend as I mentioned in Orlando um but it had to happen there first at home that semi-final match um before we let you go, I got to check in with both of you. How are you uh, uh, in, in this crazy world of ours? How are you? Where are you? How is training going? Who wants to start? Lindsay. Lindsay. Why are you making me go first for everything? 
Because, Linz, I'm not making you go first, but, like, I really love hearing your uh, opinions and things like that. So it's really, it's nice for me to listen sometimes instead of <laughs> cut away. Linz, I love you can't her. be that tough. Where are you? How are you? How's training? Um, I'm doing good. Um, I, you know, watching this game back uh, really put me <laughs> in a depressed point because I've missed it so much. But um, I've been good. I, I, I'm in Denver right now. I'm okay. working out as much as I can and, and training as much as I can. But I, I miss Portland. I miss, I miss playing. And it sometimes, you know, kind of eats away at me. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm just hoping everyone is, is staying safe and healthy out there. And I, I really just miss our fans so much. Mm. And, and watching that game was such a crazy feeling for me because I just – I'm – incredibly sad that you know what we're going through right now but you know just waiting for that time to come again you know it's funny a bit when you say the fans lens is like uh I didn't even, I mean like I knew how great our fans are and I know how loud they are but like <clears throat> in that game they kind of sounded a little bit quiet because now we have the new stadium and we have those new three levels and I feel like it's gotten 10 times louder since yeah. since that happened. And I was like, wow, it's such a big difference. Because now when I go back and watch games from 2019 or 2018 or whatever, it's crazy <laughs> how much like louder the fans are. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Kling, are you safe, symptom-free? Uh, yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Got to make sure. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I am, um, I am fully aware now that I am not the type of person that is meant to be alone. Um, I am the, the type of person that needs to be around people and hug them and be involved in groups and laughter and all of those things. Uh, so this has been difficult for me, but that being said, um, it's not so difficult that I would do anything different because I know how important it is to be home and try and support our hospital workers who are doing a kick-ass job for us and like just doing whatever they can to save lives with whatever they have available. Yeah. And um, I just, I think that I really want to give out a big thank you um, because you know, I'm I'm not so worried about me or Linz or, you know, some of our teammates. Um, I am, but I'm more worried about, you know, grandparents and parents and uh, other people that have underlying conditions and things like that. So uh, thank you for taking care of the people that I love, you know. Um, and, yeah, training's going okay. Uh, it's. Like I said, I'm not meant to be alone. Like training by myself has been um, very different. Mm. <laughs> it's like I need a friend. I need Lindsay. <laughs> you have no one to finish your crosses. Exactly. I did crossing. Uh, you know, because I I don't know if I sh should say this part, so maybe you can edit it out. But I went out. I sneak out to the field really early in the morning, so I don't. So nobody's around. And I did crossing today, and I literally just, like, crossed it into a mini goal that was, like, this big. Oh. Ooh, that's like Lindsey Horan's trick shot at the Pepsi Center in February before the Lakers Nuggets game. Check it out on Google, everybody. Oh, I've seen that, Ann. Don't you worry. Oh, I bet you have. All right, so April 18th, this match is going to uh, take place on April 18th on our website and beyond. Uh, it was supposed to be your season opener, home opener against Utah at Providence Park. I know, I know, but the Thorns fans are just going to eat this up. They thank you deeply for taking part in the memory lane revisit of this classic. So, Lens and Kling, a deep thank you for being on board and for your takes and, and for giving the Thorns fans just a little joy. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you. They give us so much joy every game, so we're glad to give it back.